The originality is a trap that is generated through the event-driven culture that we live in, where there is no long-term commitment. It's more the emotional side of the novelty than the understanding of why you need that. Hello, my name is Isaiah Hull, and this is MIF Originals, a podcast series for Manchester International Festival 2019 about originality. Five artists developing new work for the festival have been given a blank audio canvas to fill, a chance to try something new with the podcast form. This episode is all about sharing knowledge across cultural divides. When people arrive in a new country, they are usually expected to learn the customs and languages of the host culture. But what if the tables were turned? Tanya Bruguera's School of Integration gives us the chance to learn from people who have moved to Manchester and made it their home. After primary school, for sure, I wasn't a fan of the education system. I wasn't a fan of the society of high school. I wish my schools and my teachers were like this. Welcome to the School of Integration, where the lessons are given by migrants, immigrants, and refugees. I think it's important to talk about integration and understanding that integration is a two-way road. It cannot be just one person making the effort and the other person not making any. There is a general concern about how we're living with one another and um, that we need to start operating in a different way. There is a prejudice towards migrants, immigrants, and refugees, and stateless people as well, which is thinking that their culture is less important than ours, and because they are going through a hardship uh, moment, they are less than us. And also, the people who are sympathetic, let's say, of immigrants or value a little immigrants, Many times, I start by seeing immigrants as somebody who serves them or entertain them, meaning people who have skills but not knowledge. And something we want to address in here is like they have skill as well as knowledge. And sometimes, actually, we have some lessons where it is clear that the UK took what they're doing now out of their culture of that immigrant. So I think these are moments of recognition that are very important in the school as well. And now, your first lesson. Enjoy. I am Pat McMahon. I'm a drummer, musician, and I'm a community leader. And today in the School of Integration, we're going to talk about the marriage as a topic for the 21st century. You just hear the sound of my drumming. I know you love the sound you just hear now. But do you know, as you say in English, it takes two to tango. It takes two hands to give a nice sound. That's the beauty of the sound from the drum you just hear now. That means it takes two people for life. Marriage is a big subject. I have an African view of marriage, and today I have a Western view of marriage. Marriage where I came from is a family business. Marriage where I am now is a personal business. No one else is involved. But where I came from, they have to know which family are you going to go? Which family have you choose to go in connections? Do they have values? 
Value doesn't mean money. Value means values. You cannot go to marriage from where I came from without knowing the other family. It takes time. Okay, can you tell me the first time you saw your wife or you saw your husband, did you love him or was he the loss of your flesh? Was it for commitment or was it for pleasure? That's my question to you. The world is changing. Technology, globalizations. Today you can marry someone from another side of the world. Today we have different type of marriage. Same-sex marriage. Temporary marriage like in India or the Arabic countries is really marriage a commitment for the 21st century. If marriage was an historical thing, we should forget about many years ago. But it stay as the only institution that is standing up to now. Everybody knows how to make babies. Who knows how to make father? Do you know how to be a husband? Or do you know how to make babies? Marriage will stay as one of the institutions that will never collapse. Do you believe in it? How do you feel? You will tell me you have an old-fashioned view. No. I have the view and the value of the marriage. I'm not imposing you my rules, but I want to learn from you as well. Tell me about your marriage. All of us, we go home with one question we're going to keep. And that question will help you to remember me from this school. What is your why about marriage? Why have you or have you not choose that path? I think what is interesting about this lesson is that it's not so much about marriage itself, but it's about trying to find out and talk together about care for each other. And now, lesson two. My name is Mayor Wong. I'm going to talk about art is political. I'm an artist. I Original came from Hong Kong. I lived in this country over 20 years. For me, this is my home now. But at the same time, I still care about what happened in Hong Kong. And today I want to talk about what happened in 1989. This year is the 30th anniversary of Tiananmen Massacre. At that time, at that year, on the 4th of June, actually, I was graduated from university in Hong Kong. But I couldn't celebrate my graduation because there are students in China, in Beijing, and also in other cities as well. They sacrifice their lives. They ask for the basic things like freedom, democracy, reform in China, but they didn't get anything. Instead, their lives was sacrificed. And then I'm thinking about if I want to do an exhibition to commemorate this year, what should I do? What is my focus? Some people say, come on, move on, forget about it. It's a long time ago and actually it's nothing to do with you. But I thought, yes, it's nothing to do directly with me. But there are people, they are still suffering. There is a group called Tiananmen Mothers. They don't have their freedom, not even to grieve about their loss, their loved ones. They need to be quiet for their grief. The founder of Tamil Mothers, Ding Jilin, initially she was really upset for her 17-year-old son's loss. 
But later on, she started to think about other families. What happened to them? I'm not the only one. What about all those families? They lost their loved one. So she started to go one house by another house and find the families. Basically, initially, they were just trying to support each other. But gradually, they wanted to do something a bit more. So they started to collect all the victims' names. At the moment, they collected 202 names. And I thought it's really important that we remember them. They are not just died for nothing. So I make a new piece of artwork to use Chinese calligraphy with rice paper and write their names, 202, on five panels. And also, at the same time, I think this group of Tamil mothers, they should be remembered as well. We should show them they're not struggle on their own. So I make another piece of work, use hand stitches, to stitch 55 names. They are members of this group. However, because it's already 30 years, so quite a lot of them has already passed away. And some of them are died of natural causes. However, there are a few of them, sadly, they commit suicide because they couldn't bear anymore the restriction given by the government. So I think it's important to put their names in the exhibition. Let more people remember all these people, what they have endure for the last 30 years. So I think for us, in a free society, we should remember them. And actually, every year in Hong Kong, there is the candlelight vigil. Hong Kong people still remember them, still doing something. So I hope here we do this exhibition. It's also dedicated for them. I think one thing I would like to encourage to do is think about your local uh, art gallery and go to see and then inspire yourself to make something. It could be a very small thing, just a brooch or a sign or something, and be proud to take your art, go to the street, carry it with you. I think art is political. We can use art to express our concern, I think this is important. Uh, we are not just concerned about a small circle, what's going on, but what happened in the rest of the world is also important to pay attention. It is very rare to have the opportunity to see a historical event narrated by its witness and by someone who understands the nuances of politics in the place that we might not have access to. So I really value this lesson because of that. Time to take a break. Is it important to be original? I don't think so. I think that originality is a trap that is generated through the event-driven culture that we live in, where there is no long-term commitment or there is no understanding that in order for things to be good, they have to be done over time. It's more the emotional side of the novelty than the understanding of why you need that, that is kind of carrying our life today. This project is actually going the other direction, in the direction of these are knowledge that are sedimented in a culture. And I do think that originality might have to do with the fact that sometime, long time ago, people landed in other shores and they start seeing things that were exciting for them even if they didn't understand or make the effort to understand it. So I think that's kind of this colonialist uh, heritage that we have, that we need to see things 
that are new, that are different in order to be excited. Sorry, break time over, back to class. Hello, my name is Shahir Sharif. I am originally from Iran and I'll be talking about Shahnameh. Shahnameh is a poetry book written in Persian over a thousand years ago and is translated as the Book of Kings in English. After I lost my father, I asked my mother to let me have his book. He, he had an old Shahnameh in his library. And when I got hold of that book, I started looking at the poems because I wanted to see what my father has seen in those. If uh, he's put a tick or cross next to a stanza, for example, I was very interested uh, to think or to presume what he's seen in that particular line. But after reading it for a while, I became interested. To me, the book was um, undersold in a way, and it had many, many dimensions. And I became very passionate in this book. And about 11 years ago, I started a, a group called Friends of Shahnameh, and from then, I started organizing regular weekly and monthly poetry reading for the books. And uh, although it was written over a thousand years ago, up to date, it holds the record of the longest epic poem written by a single poet. So it's quite uh, vast. There are over 50,000 rhyming couplets. And the stories mostly are about the history of greater Iran, so quite a lot of wars are described in there. But at the same time, a lot of love stories, and, and this is something that Shahnameh is not really known for, but the love stories that are written in there, they are absolutely beautiful. The importance that women have in those stories, even if it's a case of women uh, going to their love and ask for the other person to marry them, which might be a little bit forward even for today's society. Although it's written over a thousand years ago, it, it feels as if it was written yesterday for today. It is very relevant. <laughs> چو دخت کمان دفگن او را بدید کمان را به زه کرد و بکشاد پر نبود مرغ را پیش تیرش گذر سهراب came to fight with Iranian and he killed um, the most important fighter and no one else was brave enough to go and fight him so he kept saying, you know, who is going to come fight with me? And no one was brave enough to go. Gorda Farid was the girl who decided to fight Sohrab. So she put the armor and pretended to be a man and went out to fight with Sohrab. Kunun man goshayam chenin ruyo muy, sepahit to gardat por az goftaguy, ke ba dukhtari u bedasht nabard, bedin son. به ابرن در آورد گرد نهانی بسازیم بهتر بود خرد داشتن کار مهتر بود گردا فرید فایتس ریلی ویل وید سهراب باید سهراب منیجز تو ترو هر اون در گراند گردا فریدز هلمت فل دان و هی ریالایزز دات شیز ا گرل سو هی سیز What's happening? Why have you come to fight me? Isn't it better that we sit down and party together rather than fighting? She says, uh, look, all our soldiers are seeing us. It's going to look bad on you if everyone knows that you're fighting a girl like this. Isn't it better to sit down and talk? So they went to the castle and Gordo Farid went to the castle first and the moment that she went in, she closed the door. So Sohrab was left outside and he didn't like the fact that he was tricked. But she was brave enough 
to go and fight with him when no other man was willing to. نگه کرد سهراب و آمدش ننگ در و شفت و تیرن در آمد به چنگ برا... نگه کرد سهراب و آمدش ننگ برا شفت و تیز اندر آمد به جنگ Whoever you are, you're not that different from the person next to you and if there are things that you would like to be valued with respect to you and your life is the same for everyone else Shahnameh and talking about Shahnameh and the stories of Shahnameh gives us this opportunity to look at the stories of people from different lands and see how relevant it is to our today society, how war starts and what are the devastations that come out of it. People become a little bit more familiar with other values which is not normally talked about. Thank you for attending today the School of Integration, or at least a little sip on it. You are not done quite yet, because now we have to assign you some homework. I would like for you to investigate the culture of migrants, asylum seekers, and refugees in your own town. This could be asking a question to a colleague, talking to a fellow parent at the school gate, or reading a book from your local library by an author from a different culture. I hope this School of Integration has inspired you to be more inquisitive and seek out the worldly knowledge that is right next to you with your neighbors. I liked listening to this. I enjoyed this, the characters, the marriage, the first bit. Was it for commitment or was it for pleasure? Art is political, it was really touching and it made me think about carrying my own art around with me and being proud and making a statement with my art rather than it just being for me. Speaking about originality and the colonialist idea, we have to see new things to be excited but those things not being new necessarily, that like, yo, it hit me. I thought, maybe I'm wrong, maybe like there is no such thing as originality. It made me consider myself in context with like my colour, why people even look at my own work. So like, I'm glad that I heard it. The Book of Kings, Iran, the Persian, the Greater, oh, it was something, there's something, ah, Book of Kings, I'm going to get my own ordered online. Thank you. I always say, I always said, I've always said that if I had a child, that I would homeschool them. But that's just selfish. That's because I just want, I want to shelter them. And I know that. That's why I shouldn't really be, you know, you can make babies, but you can't make fathers. You can't make a father out of me. This poem is about the duality of integration, about pairing. There are compromises on both sides. And it shouldn't be looked at as compromises. It's a two-way street. It's a give and a take. It's an ebb and a flow. Yeah. So this poem is about that. Homeschooled all summer, the Christmas tree punished like a dog. You don't have to do this on your own. Capsized, black, white, thrown overboard, wet begets wet. Digits of exilion spoil the net. The catch is court-martialed, of course, marriage is all yours. The point is trying to make living out of loving without losing one letter leaves left like these buy me leaflets outside slime. The biggest investment on your holiday mind, the way out of your malady by, 
any means it's not afraid overhead halo a gold handcuff holds you ransom horn adorned the dead why the antlers grow in tandem two two tango true bone protrudes all in the nude juniper heels doubly good with the ghoul so you never squeal something is up i smell doom in the deal schooled like a dog the christmas tree punished me summer long i had to do this on my own How could animals not be original? They are all original, they are all individuals, not just representatives of their species. Next week's episode is a podcast for animals of all kinds. Sybil Peters, the lead artist behind MIF's Animals of Manchester, invites you to imagine a city where all animals, including human beings, live together as equals. Thank you for listening to MIF Originals. And special thanks to Tanya Bruguera and to the teachers we've heard, Pat Michaela, Shahira Sharif and Mei Yuk Wong. There are over 80 lessons happening during the festival at the School of Integration held at Manchester Arts Gallery. I've been your host, Isai Oho. This episode was produced by Rebecca Gaskell and the music was by Vicky Clark. It's a reduced listening and MIF production. Until next time, guys, I will see you with the animals in the forest and the Jumanjis and all of that stuff. Stay tuned. <laughs>